watched a movie today. It's called Turning Red. It's a Disney Pixar movie. So if you'd like to know if I turned red after watching Turning Red, like some of these other parents did, then let's go. Okay, let's just start. First things first, I am not the family movie chick. If you look through the filmography of movies that I have reviewed, they are very few and far between a movie that you would just call a family movie. And this, Turning Red, is a family movie. It's, it's shocking and surprising that I sat my butt down and watched it, but let me tell you why. Okay, I watched Turning Red because uh, in, in following movies the way that, that I do, I found out that a lot of people had problems with this movie. People were saying that the message was not a good one for children. They were also saying that they didn't like uh, some of the characteristics of the main character, May. And May Lee is a 13-year-old girl. So they were saying that the, the characteristics that she displayed in this movie were not something that they would hope that their teenage child would kind of aspire to do. So I said to myself, self, let's watch this movie and see if you have the same issues that other people had uh, as they watched this movie. And let me tell you, the answer is no, 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 no. I did not have an issue with this movie. Quite the contrary. I thought this was a wonderful film. I don't know why people want to have something to just be outraged about so much, but I don't want to invalidate their feelings either. Let me tell you what I thought about this movie without spoiling the movie. I won't spoil the movie. The movie is now playing on Disney Plus, Turning Red. Now, the initial release of this movie was March 11th of this here year. The director is Domi Shi. Production design is by Rana Lu. Now, this kind of sparked a little bit of controversy because it was slated for a theatrical release, but this one went directly to Disney Plus instead. Disney pulled the plug on the theatrical release, and it really... I honestly think it would have hit a little different on the big screen. I don't know how much different it would be for families, but for me, I think it would have done well in theaters, especially after you look at the success of movies such as a Spider-Man No Way Home. But if you want to take it into an animated genre, we can go Sing, Sing 2, Encanto. Uh, those movies did very well in the box office, even in our pandemic era. Another thing that was different, good different, about this movie, it is the first Pixar film that is featuring an Asian lead. And many of the actors who played these characters in the movie are also Asian. Another thing that I really liked is that it was set in Canada. It wasn't set in the U.S. Everything doesn't have to come from our gaze. So yeah, it was set in Toronto, Ontario, in 2002. So how about I just give you a synopsis of what the film was about. Uh, it's starring, again, Rosalie Chang, Sandra Oh played the mother, Rosalie played May, Ava Morris, Hying Park, uh, Matrei Ramakrishnan, or Orion Lee, Wai Cheng Ho, Tristan Ellerick Chin, gosh, and James Hong. I'm pretty sure I have ruined mm, at least 75% of those names, but I did try. <laughs> the music was done by Lud Ludwig uh, Goranson, who is uh, famous for his scores in the, in the movies that he has scored. Now, as I stated before, May Lee is a 13-year-old girl who is torn between being her mother's obedient daughter and the chaos of her youth. As if that were not enough, when she gets too excited, she turns into a big red panda. Now, this is kind of uh, an allegory to the hormonal changes that most young people, uh, especially young girls, <laughs> go through at, in their teenage or tween age years. Now, one of the things that I liked about this movie is, is it was not afraid to discuss in an age-appropriate manner milestones in a young girl's life, such as uh, when she gets her first period. They talked about that because in the beginning of the movie, that's all we think is going on with May until we realize that she's turning into a panda, <laughs> a big red panda. Of course, being a 13-year-old girl, along with all of the other changes to your body that you're going through, one of the things that you have to deal with 
is turning into a big red panda. Now, she has a group of friends, May does. And her group of friends is very important to her, just like any other 13-year-old. And they are very supportive and accepting of her And when she transforms into this big monster. Well, not a monster, because it's a cute panda. Once it gets really big, she's just big and cute and red. <laughs> so she's not a monster, but it really does look like she's hulking out when she turns into the panda. I thought, I thought it was cute. I think it's cute. What a lot of parents have a problem with is that May's mother, um, Ming, is a helicopter parent. And if you're not 100% sure what a helicopter parent is, you're probably one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you're not familiar with what a helicopter parent is, uh, those are parents who pay extremely close attention to their kids' activities and schoolwork in an effort to protect them from the pain and disappointment of failure and to help them succeed. They are known to hover over their kids and they are what many would consider overly involved in their lives. Well, that that is Ming. That is a, a textbook definition of what type of parenting she's doing to May. And while I'm not saying that is wrong, you know, it is a bit overbearing. It's a bit overbearing. There's a concert. May wants to go to the concert and that is the dilemma of the movie. Uh, besides the fact that May turns to a big red panda. The other side of this story is that May is trying to be a typical teenager at the age of 13. She wants to go see this boy band play at, at this coliseum. And you will pretty much know that Ming ain't going. Ming is not going to let her go. So there are parts in the movie where because May is, is going through these hormonal changes, parents are saying, and I'm talking real parents out here, in the real world parents are saying that they do not want their children to be influenced by may's behavior as she's going through those changes and i wonder to myself so did these people navigate puberty the same way i did because i wasn't always the most rational and obedient child when i was going through puberty and this is what we're seeing happen with may may is uh, beginning to assert her own personality or individuality. Uh, she's starting to enjoy her time with her friends far more than being with her family. Uh, that's what happens as a teenager. I'm not 100% sure that it happens at 13, but I can't say it doesn't. I don't remember when I started acting a plum fool. And I really don't under, I don't remember when my son started giving me issues as far as when he began to go through puberty. But I do know that it is common, very common, to show a range of emotions that you are not familiar with because you're going through something brand new. I would hope that parents know that just because they see this on a movie doesn't mean that your children are going to uh, engage or go as far as May did. May did some things that as a parent, I would be appalled, appalled at May's behavior. As a woman who was once a 13 year old girl, I am not going to judge this character for that. Uh, this is something that we all have to navigate. And I think it is a very good thing that Disney put out something that shows another side of childhood, becoming a young adult. Um, I probably would not have paid attention to it, but there was some anime influences in this movie. I was watching Chris Stuckman. When he brought it up, I had to sit back and think about it and say, yeah, there were anime uh, traits to the animation style in this Pixar movie. What I also liked is that it gave us a, a look at different religions, the way uh, children are brought up with different belief systems, and they can still have friends who don't share those same beliefs. We also see uh, different parenting styles, and we know that in each household, there is a different parenting style and there is no one to tell you if your child comes on the other side of teenagedom into adulthood, you, congratulations, you made it. You were successful. You did not lose the child. You did not harm the child. So that's successful parenting to me. Successful parenting to me doesn't mean that your child is going to behave appropriately 100% of the time. They do something wrong and they learn a lesson from it 
and we move on. Or they do something that you don't like and you learn a lesson from it. That sometimes you pick your battles and sometimes the battle that you're fighting with a child ends up making you look more like the child. You get what I'm saying? So I, I thought that this was, while it's a different approach to a, a Pixar Disney film, I didn't see anything wrong with it. In fact, I I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. Like, thoroughly enjoyed it. Animation was beautiful. The voice acting was fantastic. The music, there were a few original songs written by Billie Eilish. Uh, I thought those were fantastic. This angle of uh, this big red panda that comes out when she's overly emotional uh, I felt like that was a good metaphor for puberty, the onset of puberty. Um, I also liked the fact that they tied it into kind of the mythology of, of the Chinese culture. I enjoyed so much about this movie. I think it has a message. And once you get the message as a parent, if you're watching this with your child, once you get the message as a parent, that starts the discussion with your child. Now you get an opportunity to talk about what happened in this movie. Do you understand what was what she was going through? Do you, you do realize that before you have to go to extremes to do something or to have something, there the goal was these concert tickets for me. If 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 there was a situation like that, before you go out and do something crazy, talk to me. And as a parent, you also realize that a lot of these good deeds will not go unpunished. So you're you're running back and forth up to the school and you're all in the kids. Uh, I won't call it their business because the kids have business. You're, you're, you're not giving them any space to grow and to be an individual without you. You get to see how that looks from the child's perspective. Because you think that you are doing everything that you can to set this child up for success, but uh, success in the real world is more than about uh, the activities that you did as a child. It's more than about the grades that you get as a child. Those are important now, but you also have to have an opportunity to form social bonds because guess what? Once you're an adult, you're out in society. You, you have to know how to work with other people, other people who will not have the same values instilled in them that you've got instilled in you. The thing that about May that she doesn't realize at 13, but she will realize when she's 33, is that, gosh, my parents gave me the tools. They gave me all the goods. I know how to be successful in uh, as far as doing what I'm told. But do I know how to navigate the streets? That is part of our education. And I know um, urban people, we, we look at it differently. Yes, that is part of the education. I can't be there 100% of the time as a parent, but I've given you the tools. I've taught you how to navigate uh, socially all by yourself. And I thought it was weird because May was, it looks like she was riding a city bus to school. So you gave her that much latitude, you know, but her mom kept popping up at the school. It was just all kinds of stuff that would be thoroughly embarrassing if you were a 13-year-old girl. I feel you, May. Your mama was doing too much. She was doing too much in this movie. But what I got out of this movie was a well-written, well-acted Pixar animated feature. I thought it was fantastic. This is probably the best movie. Let me see. I think it's probably the best movie I've seen this year. Yep, I could take it there. On my regular one to five scale, I, I would give this one a five. I'm giving it a five. And I am not, again, I am not that chick. I am not the family movie lady. But I believe that this movie is probably one of the best things that I've seen this year. And I've seen a few movies this year. <laughs> when we look over at Rotten Tomatoes, we see that the critics are really big on this movie. The critics are, are looking at it a 95% on the tomato meter. The audience not as not as heavy on it as the uh, as the critics, but I've also explained that there are large groups of parents being very vocal and saying that what they didn't like about this movie. So the audience score is a little lower; it's seventy two percent. But still, we got us a, a certified fresh movie. And then I guess I can also kind of 
toss my hat in the ring. This is my idea. This is not something that anybody told me. But there is a scene in this movie where children were at a concert and it was a lot of running around and that sort of thing. And I don't know if maybe the maybe the studio thought it was too soon after the Astro Fest uh, situation or Astro World, the Astro World situation out here in Texas that we had uh, a couple months ago. I'm thinking maybe, maybe that's why they pulled it. I don't know. This movie probably would have been done fantastic at the box office, but we can only lament what could have been. So tell me what you thought. If you've seen Turning Red, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're down there, please do me the honor of hitting that subscribe button so that you will not miss an upload. You got to turn your notifications on too, though. Yeah, so it's two things. I need you to hit the subscribe button <laughs> and turn your notifications on so you will not miss a video or a live stream because I do that kind of often. I'd also like to say a very big special thanks to my patrons. Thank you, patrons, because you guys are making this thing happen. You guys are the real MVPs. Yes, you are. With all that being said, I've got nothing else. I've enjoyed talking about Turning Red with you today, and I hope you'll join me in my next video. Peace.